The DJ, one of the most fundamental towers in TDS, just got the biggest rework we have seen yet, completely changing how it works. With a brand new ability, different music tracks you could pick for different buffs, and all of his stats being changed, it's safe to say there's a lot to go over in this video. Not only am I going to be showing how to best use the new DJ, I'll also be giving my personal ranking of how good it is. But real quick, before I start, there's only 3 days left to get my Corso plushie, so if you haven't already got one, make sure to check it out before it's too late. It's really adorable, has a massive blue head, and probably won't watch you in your sleep. There's a link to buy the plushie in the description, and with that, let's get back to the video. There are a ton of stats I had to find, so some might not be correct. If you find a mistake, let me know in the comments, and I'll edit my pinned comment to include the correction. First of all, its placement cost increased from 600 to 1200 cash, making it noticeably more expensive. At level 0, its range decreased from 15 to 12, and it now has two different music tracks you can pick from with varying buffs. The purple track grants tower within range a 12.5% range boost, while the green track gives a 5% discount. At level 1, its total cost increased from 9 to 1500 cash and its range decreased from 17 to 15. Nothing changes about its buffs at this level. At level 2, its total cost increased from 1750 to 2750 cash and its range decreased from 17 to 15. It also buffs all the tracks and unlocks a new red track. At this level, the purple track now buffs towers range by 15% and the green track discounts towers by 7.5%. The red track, however, gives towers within range a 12.5% damage buff. At level 3, its total cost increased from 4250 cash to 5750 and his range decreased from 18 to 15. At this level, the purple track now gives a 17.5% range buff, the green track gives a 10% discount buff, and the red track gives a 15% damage buff. The biggest change at this level though is the unlock of the drop the beat ability, which does a different ability depending on which track is selected on the DJ. When activated with the purple track, it knocks back enemies in range and applies a slowness debuff. It does this three times, with a cooldown of 1.5 seconds between attacking. How much it slows depends on how many towers you have in range. With zero towers, it slows enemies by 20%, but for each tower this increases by 1%, capping out at 40. The effect lasts for 6 seconds, with the duration being reset each time the enemy is hit by the DJ. When activated with the green track, it generates extra income depending on how many towers are in range. With 0 towers, it gives 250 cash, and this is increased by 35 for every tower in range, capping out at 600 cash. When activated with the red track, it damages and melts the defense of enemies, also activating 3 times. At this level, each hit deals 15 damage, and the amount of defense melting depends on how many towers are within this range. With 0 towers, it melts 5 percent defense. Each tower adds an additional 1%, capping out at 25. Listen, I warned you guys at the start, this tower is really complicated. At level 4, its total cost increased from 8,250 to 13,750 cash, and its range decreased from 18 to 16.5. The purple track's range buff increased from 17.5 to 22.5%, the green track discount increases from 10 to 12.5, and the red track damage buff increases from 15 to 17.5. The ability was also buffed for each track at this level. The purple track now deals more knockback, the slowdown effect lasts for 8 seconds, the red track's defense melt without any towers increased from 5% to 7%, and his range increased from 15 to 25. The green track's base income produced without any towers increased from 250 to 500 cash, each tower in range now adds 50 cash, and the cap increased from 600 to 1250. Finally, at level 5, its total cost increased from 17,250 to 33,750 cash, and its range decreased from 20 to 18.5. At this level, it now unlocks trinity buffs, which makes all tracks apply every pass buff. However, buffs that aren't originally from the selected track aren't as effective. The purple track now gives a 25% range buff, 7.5% discount, and plus 10 damage. The green track gives 12.5 range, 20% discount, and 10% damage. The red track gives 12.5 range, 7.5 discount, and 20% extra damage. The ability for each track was once again buffed. The purple ability deals even more knockback, the slowness duration increased from 8 to 10, it also now pulses 4 times instead of 3. The red ability's defense melting without any towers increased from 7 to 10% and its damage increased from 25 to 50. Just like the purple track, it now pulses 4 times instead of 3. The green ability's cash income without any towers increased from 500 to 750 cash, each tower in range now adds 75 cash, and the cap increased from 1250 to 2250 cash. With that, we're finally done with all the stats. So, let's take a look at how to properly use this complicated tower. First of all, which track should you be using the most? Well, it really depends on what wave you're facing. If the wave is easy, keep it on green so you can discount your teammates' towers and generate some extra income. Even if it really doesn't produce that much, free money is free money, and your teammates will appreciate the discount. If you're in the late game and waves are starting to get consistently hard, keep it on the red track so you can benefit from the passive 20% damage buff. However, if your current wave isn't that difficult, but an upcoming wave is going to be hard, I'd recommend keeping it on purple. The knockback and slow ability is very powerful and can be super helpful against something difficult. In comparison, the red ability isn't nearly as good at helping defend. So if you switch to the purple track in advance and have enough time for the track switch cooldown of 15 seconds to 
run out, there's a bit of a neat trick you can do. When the enemy comes out, activate the purple ability, then quickly switch to the red track. The DJ will continue using the rest of the powerful knockback ability, but also give your towers a 20% damage buff. This will make dealing with any threat much easier, and is a pretty handy technique. Something you might be wondering is whether or not multiple players should bring the DJ now that it has multiple tracks and abilities. In most cases, I don't think this is a good idea. Because of the trinity buffs at max level, one DJ already gets most of the passive buffs. The only real benefit you would get is being able to spam the purple knockback ability. Still, I think it would be more helpful to bring a different support tower like the commander, medic, cryomancer, merc base, etc. Currently, the DJ is bugged and his purple ability can actually slow down final bosses like the fallen king up to 40%. This will probably be patched pretty soon, but in case it doesn't, that is really overpowered. Overall, the DJ is now a very versatile and incredible support tower, basically being like a combination of every support. It can slow down enemies, melt the fence, discount, buff range, buff damage, generate income, the DJ can do everything. Because of that, I'm obviously going to rank it as an S plus tower. It went from being overpowered to being overpowered. Well done TDS. If you guys have already tested out this tower yourself, let me know in the comments how you feel about this rework. It's pretty complicated, but personally, I think the three track system is an awesome mechanic. This video took forever to make because I had to gather so many hidden stats, so I hope you found this helpful. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to join the Bluehead Mafia. Also, if you want to talk to me, consider checking out my Discord. We got some pretty cool features, like a custom party finder bot that will automatically pair you up with other people who are trying to do the same strategy. There's a link to the server pinned in the comments. And finally, I want to give a huge shout out to these channel members for supporting my content. If you want to add me as a friend on Roblox or get early access to some of my videos, consider becoming a channel member. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. Anyways, that's it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.